All right, so welcome to this train tutorial. A bit different this one. A lot of people have been asking how I set up my boards. So uh, I haven't filmed one of these for a good long while. I'm going to show you from start to finish the process of actually setting the table up. Uh, so starting from scratch uh, and then just showing people the, just step by step how it's done, uh, which order to do things, uh, little hints and tips of how to set up a good table uh, for games of 40k. So tune into this one. Uh, just follow the process through and there's no reason why if you've got the stuff, uh, that you can't set up the same kind of tables that you see on the channel. So we'll get straight into this, things that you'll need. Uh, I recommend battle mats. Uh, they have kind of revolutionized tabletop gaming. I think they're a brilliant job. Uh, so uh, that's the first thing you need is your battle mat. Now these uh, roll out nice and flat. There's the, this kind of mouse mat material, I'm actually filming on, uh, placing the mat on top of an upside down mat here for this nice soft black finish. Uh, and then that's the material underneath. Uh, I roll them with the design facing out when I roll them up. Uh, so I rolled up that way. I used to roll them the other way, but I like to roll them that way. Just a little tip here. Uh, when you roll them that way, uh, you can. it's easy to see what design it is, just to which ones that you need uh, setting up the board. And the other thing is when you roll them out, uh, they're all out nice and flat. Because they're curled very slightly that way, then when they sit down flat, they roll out. Uh, nice and flat for you. If you roll them the other way, you can get a little bit of curl on them, just not too much, uh, and that sort of starts to go away after a while. But uh, I found that if you roll them that way around, uh, they sit nice and flat on the board. They're nice and quiet for dice rolling. When you're rolling your dice on the board, you just have that quiet fud as opposed to clattering sounds that you might get from other uh, terrain uh, boards. Uh, they're nice and figure friendly as well, nice and soft. Uh, for the figures. So the mouse mat material and then the design is printed on top and the great thing about that is that it gives you a nice flat playing surface and then all the work's been done for you. The actual surface that you're playing on has all the design work done, some roads are all laid out, the ruins and everything's all done uh, on this mat just here. So very very useful indeed. It's a brilliant head start uh, setting up terrain. So this particular mat is 6x4 in size. I haven't seen it for the 60 by 44 inches. GameMat.eu may bring this design over uh, onto that newer size for 10th edition games of 40k. But 6x4, it's quite easily fixed. Uh, we just usually leave like a pipe boundary, uh, just marking the 60 inch uh, across the board and leaving a bit spare on the edge. So it's not too bad. Uh, you can simply correct it that way if you want the 60 by 44 size. Uh, then the 6x4 is a little bit uh, deeper as well by a few inches uh, so you can mark that off or just play without worrying about it, it's not too significant on the board, it's up to you. But uh, if you want the 60x44 inches strictly then they do sell 60x44 battle mats uh, from gamemat.eu. There is a link for them in the video description below, there's also a discount code that you can use uh, as well. So. This setup and the method involved is the same for pretty much all the boards I put together. So we've got this particular terrain here, but you can replicate it for any of the terrain uh, battle mats and setups that we have on the channel. So battle mat you'll need. Then you'll need terrain features. So uh, sort of larger terrain features I'm talking about. So things like your ruins, uh, these big vats across here. Uh, so those are your main structures and they'll go on first. Uh, then you'll need things like your accessories just to really customize the table, make it into a sort of a nice 40K feel. Uh, and then the way you finish the board, and I'm a big fan of doing this. We've got some appropriately colored stones here just to, to uh, join the terrain to the board, just to merge the whole thing together. I want the whole thing to look like it all belongs together, like it really is a war zone uh, that uh, you know, it's very believable uh, as much as possible, trying to make it as realistic as you can. And just some simple touches, like adding in some stones, a little bit of accessories, just really helps create a nice theme for the table. So that's the things that you'll need. For terrain, I've got a mixture of stuff here. It's Games Workshop terrain uh, just here. Uh, and then we also have uh, some uh, terrain from GameMat.eu. So this is the industrial terrain set. It comes pre-painted. There is a tutorial for this on the channel. It comes with... It comes like a brownie colour, it comes this colour here as standard. So it's a good foundation to start with, uh, but then I've taken that straightforward colour scheme and then I brought it over to try and match in with this mat as much as possible. There's a number of videos on the channel now where I show you how to bring uh, gamemat.eu terrain, spray it and paint it up quickly 
uh, to match in with uh, particular design battle maps. And, and again, you're getting that nice kind of theme running through. So the map, the terrain, all starts to match with each, with each other. I'd, I then take in that same colour scheme and process and applied it to the buildings as well. So you're just matching everything uh, nicely together. Then things like your accessories, they're quite universal. So I can use these on different terrain pieces. I can use them here. I can use these on jungle, uh, regular city fight and so on. Same with the fences. They're kind of more neutral. I can bring those across to the different uh, tables that we have. So that's the great thing about accessories. You can use, use them in lots of games, uh, for lots of terrain. Setups. So that's the things that you'll need. On top of the stones, depending on what you're fighting on, things like lichen, uh, bushes and shrubs and all those kind of extra uh, bits you can add as well. But there's no, I'm not going to play any kind of uh, lichen and so on um, in this. It's just going to be the rocks for this battle. So that's a spread of what you need. Uh, we'll go on to the first step then, setting up the board. So as mentioned already, I start with the larger pieces first when I come to board like this. I've rolled out the battle mat, I've, I've pushed it to the edges, run my hand across the board uh, just to get the mat flattened out and pushed to all the edges and it's set up nice and square uh, on the table. Then you're straight into your larger terrain pieces. So it would depart a little bit from the official method of going about playing a game. Usually you're deciding your mission and laying out the, uh, the mission, you know what's going on, uh, and then the players start taking it in turns to place terrain on the table. So keep that in mind. Uh, but for the channel here, I like to have terrain set up ready so that we can get straight into filming and so on. Uh, so if you've got, you're at a club where your friends come around, it's nice to get the board completely set up and ready to go, and then just set up and play uh, straight away. So there's two ways going about it. There's the official way, uh, playing tournament and so on, players get to place terrain, uh, but then we go for more uh, more time to set up a nice kind of table. If, if you're rushing to play a tournament game and so on, you haven't got time to, to place stones and accessories on the table. Uh, unless you're very very quick so this is more of a uh, narrative and themed uh, way of setting up so larger pieces of terrain and i'm trying to set up in a way where there's a nice spread of terrain and your main features in place first then you just complement that with the smaller uh, accessories and then just finish off with the stones and lichen uh, and so on at the end i'm trying to be fair i'm trying to think like if if i go at the other side of the board uh, or we're playing from end to end, just trying to keep it fair. Where are the terrain pieces? Is it a bit one-sided? Has one player got an advantage of terrain over the other? So you're trying to keep it balanced and fair as much as possible. So we'll start with these ruins. I think I've seen a spot where this one could go. It's nice to have everything leading to the middle, so that the centre of the table is the main kind of feature. You don't want large empty areas, which can become unfair sort of killing zones and so on. I want to try and break the table up as much as I can. 10th edition ruins like are obscuring now, so they are quite significant. I'll get those towards the center of the table. So this ruin here, just double, double height. I think it will fit in this footprint just here. So I'm gonna push it right to the edge. We've got ourselves our first ruin placed on the table. This mat's a little bit restrictive because you've got your set road. So I wanna try and push right up to that as close as I can. So I don't want too much of a gap coming across here. The other great thing is if you are running accessories, uh, things like this, then you can span gaps like that and place uh, accessories across just to try and uh, create line of sight blocking terrain and so on. So we've got a ruin across here, and I think I might just finish it off, close it off with uh, this corner piece just here. So we've got a nice uh, terrain set up right in the middle. That's nicely that place there in the center of the board. So, you know, I wouldn't then place, you know, I'd be loath to place one straight here and then have this too tight. I mean, it looks pretty good. Might get rid of it. I could run it that way. So I've got a little bit open, uh, but still running across of the train over here. I'm conscious of the opponent across the other side. You know, this is uh, perhaps a little bit advantageous for someone fighting across here. But for your games of 40k, you could be playing diagonally, you could be playing from end to end. Uh, so you have to try and keep all the angles uh, in mind as you set things up. Uh, so I'm going to add some height to this as well. So I'll place that on top there. And just standing back looking at the board, it's looking healthy enough at this stage. I really do think I'm going to try and put a ruin across uh, the other side of the table. just for. And I'm, I'm also thinking about filming and you know, how it's going to look on the table and so on as well. So another ruin across the other side just sort of gives you a nice triangle. And it's quite nice to look at uh, on camera. So that leaves us with that. We've got another uh, ruin piece here as well. So yeah, I've decided to put this one across here. 
uh, and then with this piece as well, just locking the whole thing in. So it's sort of balanced the table out. Uh, so I've got the two pieces across the other side and one across here. Just try and make things as fair as possible. So we've still got this road running across it. It's quite wide and road running down that side. So we'll address that, I think, with some accessories. Uh, again, trying to think of height and ways of building that up. Uh, so move on. We've got more pieces of terrain, uh, larger pieces to put on the table. All right, so continuing to place stuff on the board, the main features we've placed already, uh, and then just trying to add, build it up on the table. So there's some areas that are starting to fill up quite nicely. Uh, place these two across the entrance across here. Uh, it's another great feature is these walkways. Now there is a tutorial on the channel. I'm going to try and link as much as I can for you, uh, but how to create these walkways and the chain link fences uh, across here. These are scratch built. Great fun to do. Once you've got them, you can just use them for so much stuff. And the same process uh, involved and the same painted technique and so on. Uh, for the chain link fences, the walkways, same material being used. They're brilliant for spanning gaps. Such good fun uh, setting up tables. And you can also use the same process for creating these really good posters to really, um, and billboards to really give it that sort of 40K uh, theme. So you'll see those dotted about in games. Uh, but all three of these follow the same materials, same kind of process involved. So check out that tutorial for, again, for accessories are so good for tables. And once you've got them made, you can use them for dozens and dozens of games. So you really can get some good usage out of them. So uh, I've put a walkway, two pieces of games workshop train and just reconnected the whole thing together with a walkway. It's a brilliant job. You know, you can put a sniper squad on top there or something like that. Uh, and it just creates uh, another layer. It's great to have sort of a, a ground floor to play on, but if you can create a second, third layer, it just adds another dimension to the game. It's really, really good fun. Uh, to try and break up the roads across here, I've started to place uh, these containers and double stack them just to create a bit of height so units can run high behind them. I'm also conscious when I'm setting up of being fair on things like vehicles that are trying to perhaps move through gaps. I'm making sure that a regular vehicle can try and get through and around these kind of gaps across here just to try and make the game so you can navigate around uh, fair enough. So uh, trying to keep that in mind at the same time. There's a number of things you're trying to think of. Is it fair on the opponent, whatever end they play from? Uh, and then uh, access for vehicles trying to push through and so on, you're trying to keep that in mind as well. So filled out this area quite nicely. Remember, these is, this is obscuring terrain. I'm trying to block off some of the roads. I'm trying to think about the other side of the table, trying to make it fair. You can see I've stacked up some pipes across there as well to add a bit of height over in that corner. I've started an industrial sort of setup across here, a couple of vats, the chain link fences being set up uh, along here as well. So I'm thinking, see if I can get away with this. I've got a walkway. If I could stretch between those two, it'd be really good. So I'm going to move this along. And just It's good fun. You're just stretching and playing around with the terrain to see what you, combinations you can come up with. There we go. So now you've got a, a level across there. That's really good fun. All right, so that looks good on the table. So just looking around for other possibilities, another container. Might stack that there. I'm wondering about running another walkway across this. Now you've got a real sort of uh, connected zone across there. Maybe, think about that one. Uh, the walkway is one of the last things I place on the table. And then we're just looking around to see this gap. There's a gap across here. I need to think about this one as well. Okay, so we have the table filling out quite nicely. Uh, so I've put some containers across here to try and fill up this gap. Some Unitron armored containers. They're brilliant gap fillers. And they're like Lego bricks. Just stack them up how you want. So they're really, really good. Uh, I've put a walkway across here between these two pieces uh, that comes with the chem zone terrain set. Uh, breaking up the road, you can start applying your accessories. So I've got some tank traps across here. I've placed some across the other side as well. Uh, I've added another container to that just to bulk it out a bit more. I've established my little uh, industrial zone across here, with some accessories on the board, adding in some admec piping and so on. Uh, this chem zone set does come with its own pipe set, quite a comprehensive set. Uh, of lengths and junctions of those as well. Uh, so we've got this, the table being filled up quite nicely, but there's gaps everywhere for things to move. Uh, but at the same time, when you come down uh, to sort of miniature level, you can see there's areas that are blocked off quite nicely. Uh, so it's all coming together quite well. Then around the other side of the board, you can use your accessories to create little themes. I'll create a little barricade across here and then stacked up some ammunition, like so there's some, been some kind of resistance, some kind of little base. Uh, across it, it's been abandoned, ammunition's been left behind. It's just creating these little themes, little storylines going on, just to really add uh, some nice narrative to your tables. That's what you can do when you, you take your time and set up stuff uh, nicely. You really can sort of build the storyline 
uh, for your table. So we'll press on, I've got a few more accessories to add. So with the Chemzone terrain set, you get add these accessories. So uh, these ones are going to the workshop and then these are the ones you get with the Chemzone set. So um, 10 of each of those and then I've split them. I think they come split when they color with their color scheme anyway. Uh, but I've gone for these kind of rusty and grey colours here to, again, match him the rest of the terrain. And the ball sh should see the colours across here reflecting slightly in these. It all matches quite nicely. But these are good for stacking up uh, next to buildings and containers and so on. You're starting to just try to merge the terrain and make it as part of the board like it belongs on the table. So across here, we've got a completed piece of a corner here for this room. Don't have one across here, so I've used the boxes and barrels. Uh, just to create that for me, just to lock that terrain piece in so that both players know that's the boundaries uh, of that room. So it can, you can use terrain to assist you in the game as well, uh, just to mark up things, make it clearer for you on the table. So that's a useful uh, way you can use the little accessories. So pretty much I've completed here. Accessories are all on the board. So the table looks all right. You can play with it as it is. It doesn't take too long to set up, about 10, 15 minutes to have everything on the board. Uh, I'm going to finish it off with uh, my stones. So these I've collected from the beach, we'll just get a few out here. So these are the stones, I've collected these, these came from a beach, I've seen uh, washed clean stone, nice random sizes coming from riverbeds as well, just out on walks I've seen them. Uh, if you buy them from a shop, they're going to be sifted uh, and all uniform kind of size, you're not going to get the random kind of stuff, so natural is best if you can. Uh, so that's the colours, now they come like a pastel, they naturally came like a pastel kind of uh, it's brick greys colour coming through, so it needs to do too much to these. Basically took the sprays that I've been using on the actual terrain and then applied them to the stones, and that way you'll get uh, a nice match. And again, you'll see them blending in with the ball just here. And then what, what happens is you get the printed design in 2D, but then it starts to become 3D when you apply the stones onto the board. And it's a brilliant way of just merging uh, terrain in. So I would just sprinkle them across and help that terrain just to merge into the board. And just a little bit of stones and accessories can make all the difference here. I'm just gonna tuck these into here. There's a few odd bits that I place in, just spare parts. That's from a towel, uh, devilfish tank kit, just sprayed up, washed, and then just throw that in. And again, just creating a little bit of, bit of interest, a little bit of realism uh, to the table. So I'm gonna go around uh, and just merge it in. So you've got a, a piece of terrain that's placed on the board. So the corner of that building, it's just stark and just harsh placed on the board. Then add in your stones and accessories and it just blends the whole thing in, making it like it belongs on the table. And how much work is that? It's gonna take me about five minutes to place these stones and just adding another layer of realism to your board. All right, so stones scattered and placed across the board. There's another trick that you could do uh, to fill up your table and it's quite an effective uh, thing. See the red sort of thing we've got going on here, these rusty kind of colors. I brought in some spare models. Vehicles are particularly good and you can introduce those into your table just to become part of the terrain. Uh, so there's a Blood Angels razor back here and I've placed the swivel of the gun around like it's been ambushed and it's on fire. So you're really making this into a hot war zone when you can add uh, these kind of effects to your tables. So just simply place them on the board. You can use your stones uh, just to scatter across the model just to show that it's out of action and not taking part in the game, uh, just in case Blood Angels are actually fighting across this board. And then I've used my burning vehicle markers, which I've made years ago. I've looked after them, they're just based on a coin. Uh, there's a bit of a wire structure inside, uh, and then the fluff is teddy bear fluff. So a number of teddies have had to lose weight, uh, and I've used the fluff there, sprayed it up, painted it up, to create the burning vehicle marker effect and it just simply places on there the weight of the coin just holding the whole thing uh, in place. There is a tutorial for that on the channel and other people have been asking uh, down for the different seasons on the channel how you do those so uh, that uh, tutorial is available the burning vehicle uh, marker tutorial on the channel but uh, it just really adds to a nice theme on the board to actually have abandoned vehicles on the table. There's another one around the other side as well. I don't overdo it, but just a few, again, just creates narrative areas of interest, little stories being told across the table. So now you've got an area where a vehicle's been ambushed at some point uh, in this sector, and you're just creating a whole story across here. There's a story across the other side, it's really trying to make it into a uh, strong narrative theme. The other thing about the stones, the usefulness for those is to fill out your ruins to build up the rubble. 
Now, if this is a collapsed building, there's going to be rubble, so you could fill it up with your stones as well. Again, just adding to the realism. So the stones are scattered out across the table. We'll go around to the other side of the board to see the finished table across the other side. So I've placed a drop pod across here. Does look cool on the table. There's another storyline being developed. You know, some units come hurtling in here. As, and as, who knows what's happened to it. Maybe they've been wiped out. Maybe they fulfilled their mission. Uh, but their transport vehicle was destroyed. So, uh, you know, it's like an Imperial sector we've got going on. But it's, uh, it's, it's a war zone here. Uh, and a dangerous place to be. With the stones, uh, I go, I don't want to sweep them up. I, I place them in, in tight to the terrain, uh, but leave them quite loose on the table. I, I don't sweep them up, make them really neat, because that's not, again, not realistic. Stones and rubble will be scattered, but not too much. I haven't got them dotted about here. You know, I would, I would tuck them in and keep the table relatively tidy, just to keep it random uh, as much as possible, as natural as possible on the table. Then um, my final finishing touch is little accessories I've picked up. Uh, this Blood Angels Terminator, again, perfect for this table, sitting on the throne that comes from the Space Hulk set. So too does the CAT, the cat. And again, these can assist you in the game. So I'm going to place this here. Uh, I'll adjust it accordingly, but we, I can use that to mark the center of the table for various rules purposes. So again, very, very useful. And again, you can use these next to objective markers and so on. And I've got Frank here, the remnant of my uh, firstborn space marines. He wanders around our tables, lost, looking for help. Uh, so you'll find him somewhere on the table. And then this ruin, or this uh, uh, slain Terminator model, actually comes from uh, one of the Tyranny Monster kits. And its foot's meant to go on top of this Terminator. But I, I took, the, took the Terminator, I used a rock instead, and then salvaged this model. Looks brilliant on the table. So again, you can place that. He wouldn't come out of the drop pod, but you can place him somewhere on the board. I say he died just here. And just place them on the table, and you've got yourself a nice, again, another story uh, developing for you. Love, love accessories like that on the table, just again, really adds to the theme uh, of the board. So that's the table from start to finish. We started with just a blank battle map, main pieces of terrain first, uh, accessories, large and small, and then stones to blend the whole thing in. Then other finishing touches that you can do, it's easily done, burnt out vehicles, and then little uh, terrain pieces to add on. And you're just trying to turn your table from just a regular board into something that's got a real strong 40k theme. Little stories developing all across the table and hopefully it'll be a joy uh, for you to play your games of 40k across. But that's how I create my terrain boards. Uh, for clearing up, people ask, well, how long does it take to clear up? I do it in reverse order. So the first things I take off the table is the larger pieces. Remove those and put those away. Then I take the accessories away. Uh, and then after that, you've just got your stones and lichen, which you gather up. And for stones, I gather that up by lifting the corners each end or each corner, the stones will slide into the middle, gather them up, put them away in their bag, and the table's put away, and it would take less than 10 minutes to pack the board away. So that's how I uh, pack my tables up. Doesn't take too long at all. Let us know how you get on. If you're on YouTube channel membership, come over to Discord, and you can share your terrain uh, setups there, your armies as well, and you can join us on the Discord community uh, for all levels at the YouTube channel membership. That's the video. Keep a lookout for more. Uh, train tutorials on the channel. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time.